All right, so today I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys how to set up a Minecraft server on a VPS. Um, one of the things to be aware of is that you're going to need at least 256 megabytes of RAM available on your VPS. Um, if you're looking for a VPS provider, I recommend BlueVM. Uh, they offer plans starting at $350 a month that are perfect for VPS-based uh, Minecraft hosting. Um, just choose either one of them. Um, they do have some higher end plans as well if you're looking for a larger end server. Um, either virtualization is fine, however you're going to end up spending a lot less with OpenVZ. Alright, so to begin, I've re-imaged my VPS to Debian. Now, these instructions will work for most operating systems uh, in the Debian or Ubuntu range. Um, so if they're based on either of those, you're fine. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask below. I'll, I'll gladly answer them. All right, so to begin with, go ahead and take the IP address you've been given, and you can go ahead and punch that in uh, to PuTTY. If you don't have a copy of PuTTY, it's down below in the description, um, so you can go ahead and download it. Uh, leave the default port alone. Go ahead and open it up. It's going to say this uh, potential security breach the first time. Don't worry about it. It's just a notification that you've never connected to this server before. All right, so go ahead and log in uh, with root as your username, and then whatever your VPS provider you set your password to. Once you're logged in, the first thing we're going to do is update your system so that it has a full list of all of the things that can download. To do that, go ahead and type in apt get update. All right, and this will take about 30 seconds tops. Uh, basically, it's just a list of everything that you could install on your server. Once you've done that, go ahead and um, what we're going to do is go ahead and search for how to install um, Java. Java is required in order to run the Minecraft server. So um, if you want to search with me, you can. I'm not, you don't have to. Um, it's completely optional, so you can skip this step if you like. So apt cache uh, search for JRE, or Java Runtime Environment. And it'll just come back with the list of all the different things you can install. Now, for, the, for those of you who skipped that step, that's fine. Now you're going to install Java, which you actually need to do. So apt get install open JDK tag 6 tag JRE. Now it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to install? Go ahead and hit Y on your keyboard and hit Enter. It'll flow through some information about what all it's installing, what it's doing. This can take up to a minute to two minutes, depending on your VPS provider. Um, I think BlueVM is probably in about the 30 to 45 second range tops. Um, we'll see here in a second. While we're waiting for that, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, bucket copy of the server. Um, so basically, you can just go to dl.bucket.org like I have. And uh, the button that they have there is a pretty good example. If you right click on the button, you can go ahead and click on copy link location. And what that does is it copies the URL path or the exact way to get to the download of the server. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you what all we're going to do with that. Now once Java's done installing, we're going to install one more program, then we'll go ahead and set up the Minecraft server. Also, one more thing while we're waiting for this uh, to install. If you want a automated setup script, basically, where it'll go ahead and run Java um, with Craft Bucket on it, um, you can go ahead and use the one off of wiki.bucket.org slash setup a server. Um, they have a script here that you can go ahead and just basically paste in, and it, it'll uh, make sure that everything's good to go. it's done. Alright, so once it's done installing, go ahead and type in apt get install screen. Now what screen does is it allows you to go ahead and execute a, uh, start up a program and leave it running while you're not connected to the server. Uh, this is especially good if you don't have your computer on 24 hours a day or whatever have you. Um, so 
in this case, it's already installed on my VPS, so I don't have to worry about that. If it asks you to confirm and then it installs it, that's fine as well. All right, so I like to stick Minecraft in a folder because it creates a lot of crap everywhere. There are files for plugins, permissions, everything. So I go ahead and do mkdir, which means make directory, and Minecraft. You can see it created the folder Minecraft on there. You can go ahead and open it up, so cd Minecraft. And inside of it, it should be completely empty. Go ahead and type in wget, and then paste in that link that you had just gotten from the button here. So in this case, it's right click for putty and go ahead and hit enter. Once you've done that, it'll go ahead and download it to your server. Um, shouldn't take too long. All right, you do an LS and it shows you that it's been downloaded to the server. Next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and start up screen. So go ahead and type in screen and hit enter. Go ahead and press space on your keyboard. Once you're inside of the screen, um, you can go ahead and type in this command. Uh, I can go ahead and paste it in as well. So something like this, or you can just copy all of this onto your server. So like that, copy, and then just paste it in. It doesn't always work, it depends. Um, cat's one of those weird things. So in this case, we'll just go ahead and execute the Java runtime environment. All right, so a little bit about this command before you execute it. Um, it's pretty straightforward, uh, Java, and then you're gonna go ahead and set the maximum amount of RAM that the server can use, the minimum amount of RAM that it can use, and um, the location of the server executable. So if you only have 256 megabytes of RAM, you change this number, these two numbers here to 256, and 256 respectively, and then you'd hit enter. In our case, I have quite a bit of RAM, so 1024 is equal to a gig. Okay, and you can go ahead and hit enter. Now it'll go through and install, um, not install, but go ahead and spawn, create the spawn area and all the things around it. And once that's done, uh, Minecraft server will be good to go. Um, what I like to do is go ahead and disconnect from it at this point while it's creating the spawn area and whatnot. Um, you can go ahead and do that by pressing Control A, D on your keyboard, and then your Minecraft server has been created. Now if you do an LS, it'll show you all of the things that are listed on the server. Um, so these are all the files that Minecraft created once it was set up and good to go. Uh, you can go ahead and edit uh, server properties with Vim. And it sets all of the different things for the uh, actual world itself. So as an example, if you want to change the default port, um, which I don't recommend, you could do it there. Or you can rename the world or whatever have you. Um, some of the things that most people like to change are the level seeds and um, the game modes, the max players, etc. Um, you can also change the message of the day from here. Okay. When you're done editing things in Vim, you can go ahead and press um, uh, colon X and enter, and that'll go ahead and save the file again. You do have to reset the server every time you make changes to it. Now, let's say you want to go ahead and add a plugin to this system. So you go into the plugins folder, CD plugins, and there's nothing in there at the moment. You can go ahead and download the plugins using wget and the path to the plugin and then extract it on your server. And from there you can go ahead and restart your server and everything's good to go. You can configure it as well using Vim. All right? If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and post in the text below or whatever have you. Thanks.